The news reports all said there was no possibility that this warhead could have detonated. So it was a big news story for a few days and then it was forgotten. The governor of the state of Arkansas is Bill Clinton. As you can see, he's standing by on Little Rock this morning to talk with us about the situation. Do you think that the people of Arkansas who lived around the Titan II missile site, Governor, were in danger at the time of the explosion? Well, Tom, of course, as regards a nuclear explosion, all we can do is to trust the experts there. They say there was never a danger of a nuclear explosion. As far as the community itself is concerned and the danger from a possible radioactive leak if the uh, warhead itself has been, if there is a warhead and if it has been damaged, have you heard anything from Washington confirming whether there is one there or not? I have not. Uh, I've heard uh, rumors. I won't go into those right now. I remember that Vice President Mondale, he was trying to find out did, did this have a real warhead? Did this missile, was it armed with a nuclear warhead? You know, when my vice commander, Colonel Ryan, went to the hot springs, Vice President Mondale asked that question whether a nuclear weapon was involved. And, uh, of course, uh, Colonel Ryan said, I can't confirm or deny. And that's to the vice president. That's when he got on the phone with, Secretary Brown. The first thing I wanted to know was whether there had been any scattering of nuclear material or, still worse, a nuclear explosion. And when I heard that there had not been, my level of attention went way down. Accidents were not unusual in the Defense Department. There was at least, there must have been several every day. When the public affairs people took over, the strategy was to let the Secretary of the Air Force handle it. I spent many years working on the design of nuclear explosives, and I can guarantee you the one thing that we spend most time on is to make sure that they can't go off under, under any conceivable accidental circumstances, and that's as much as I want to say. Was there a chance that that bomb could have detonated? Yes. We can't know. That's the thing that terrifies. We can't know what the risk is. Uh, I can't tell you it's going to detonate or not detonate, because every accident is this unpredictable set of circumstances. There's a culture of secrecy around nuclear weapons that on the one hand has been necessary, on the other hand has made the management of these weapons even more dangerous. According to the Department of Defense, there have been 32 broken arrows, that is, serious nuclear weapons accidents that could have endangered the public. But a few years ago, the Department of Energy released a declassified document that said there had been more than a thousand accidents and incidents involving our nuclear weapons. Not only had the public not been told about these hundreds and hundreds of accidents, but even the man responsible for the safety of our nuclear weapons wasn't being told about accidents involving those weapons. When I was the director of weapon development, I was unaware of a large number of accidents and incidents because I had no access to the information. I was surprised when I read about the number of nuclear accidents that we had in the Air Force. I knew about some of those, but I didn't know there were so many. Again and again, in looking at these documents, you find an effort to blame the person who dropped the wrench, who used the wrong tool at a Minuteman site, blew the warhead off the missile, who brought the seat cushions onto the plane that caught on fire and crashed the plane. There's this instinct to blame the operator, to blame the little guy. If the system worked properly, somebody dropping a tool 
couldn't send a nuclear warhead into a field. 